Hey gang, are you ready to get ripped? Well, you've come to the right gosh darn place. Welcome to Tim and Spencer's Workout Bonanza. I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. In just six fortnights, you can go from schlub to bub. And I'm not gonna lie to you, this is gonna be the hardest thing you've ever done. But it'll be worth it when you see those results. That's right, in just 12 short weeks, I went from this to this. Just take a look at the results from one of our satisfied customers. Ah! You can see the difference 36 days can make. Did you say 36 days? I thought there were 84 days in 12 weeks. Well, Tim, you ignoramus. In our program, we work out every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. That's 36 days. How fascinating! What are we waiting for? Let's jump right into week one. Okay kids, week one's all about the leg muscles. Today I'm gonna be walking up some stairs. Can't build them out without a strong foundation. So let's work those legs. Let's go! Wowee, that was something else. I tell you, man, there was this part back there. I was looking at you. I didn't think you were going to make it, but then you did. I know exactly what you're talking about, man. I thought about giving up, but then I told myself, winners never quit. And I pulled through. Okay, gang, that'll be it for today. Rest up tomorrow. It's going to be a tough Wednesday. Today we're focusing on an often underappreciated part of the human body, the kneecap. Tim here is the kneecap expert. I'd also like to welcome our first live audience member today. Nathan Hall, Tim and Spencer's biggest fan. Ray is on the silver screen. He knows virtually everything about his two heroes. He witnessed their rise and fall. And though many fans have abandoned Tim and Spencer, Nathan remains. Let's get this started. First, we're going to do some quick bends. All right, great job, everybody. Now, we're gonna do some knee cap. First, get on your hands and knees. Next, lift both of your legs up so that only your hands and knee cap are holding you up. All right, now with your legs still in the air, put your hands behind your head so that only your knee caps are holding you up. Got it? No? All right, now we're gonna rotate on those calves. All right, you're one step, or should I say kneecap, closer to being a better human. I won't lie, today's gonna be rough for some of you. I never lie, and neither do my hips. Dancing. Everyone does it. Shakira, Elvis, Richard Nixon, Richard Nixon's dog, Santa, and I, I think that's about it. But never fear, dear listeners, you too can be a dancing queen. I want everyone dancing. There's no right way to do it. This is something you just have to feel. Be yourself and let it all out. Tim and Spencer's work is the only thing that makes Nathan feel happy ever since his family was taken. wraps up week one. See you guys next week. That was the worst thing I've ever done. Schlub to bub? 
Are you kidding me? I can't believe we went from Golden Globe nominee to this garbage. We signed on for 12 weeks of this. I can't do 12 weeks of this. Well, if we don't do that, we're done for. We're contractually obligated. It's only 11 more sessions. That's 33 days. I'm not doing 33 days of this. It'll be over before you know it. You know what my favorite part of the body is? I sure don't. What is it? The ear, of course. And the best way to work out the ear is by listening. Listening to what, pal? It can be anything, but today, let's listen for the wild animals that stalk the UPS truck around these parts. Great idea, but before you start listening, you gotta get listening. Show them the biz, Wiz. Let me tell you a story about a man by the name of Ishtar Germain. Ishtar was born in Italy, where his parents didn't have much money. So, on a day like any other, Ishtar and his parents stowed away on a ship to the continent of North America. Soon after they landed on the coast of New York, both of Ishtar's parents became very sick, and not three months later, they were both dead. It was around this time Ishtar joined up with the local mob and became a very powerful mafioso. But, one day, the FBI, after months of collecting information, finally got enough evidence on Ishtar to bring him down, which they would do unless Ishtar gave up the names of all his gangster friends. Fearful of living out the rest of his days in prison, he did in fact give up the names and was put into the witness protection program and was moved to Florida. Less than a year into this program, a young filmmaker from Hollywood appeared to Ishtar, wanting to make a film about his year spent inside the mob. Ishtar was so proud that he was going to be in a movie, he had to be removed from the witness protection program because he was telling everyone the film was about him. Furious, Ishtar stole a working model of a Spanish galleon at a Florida port, taking it for himself. Ishtar turned out to be a pretty good ship captain, as he had spent many months studying about ships in his free time in the witness protection program. He made it all the way to the coast of Africa, where he was hit by a terrible storm, leaving him shipwrecked on the continent. It was a sea of sand. He lasted four days on his feet, but eventually he couldn't walk any longer. He died there in the sand. A starving African child finds the body of Ishtar and takes his wallet from his pocket. There he finds five dollars. The boy runs to the nearest warehouse market and buys a can of pears. The only problem is he can't afford a can opener. The boy dies in the desert, all because he couldn't open this can. In understanding the incredible irony, he dies with a smile on his face. And this smile, this tragic, desolate smile, is the shape your hand needs to be in for this technique. Do you hear anything? Shh! Listen. Oh! No! Oh. No! Oh. Ah. Wow, cool stuff! I hope you've got wiggly ears, listeners, because you'll need them for this next exercise. That's right, ear wiggling is our next step to success. But Tim, I can't wiggle my ears. That's why no one loves you. All right, let's get them lobes a-moving. If you want buffed up ears, you gotta know when to listen and when to tune the world out. So, if you weren't listening, <laughs> we're focusing on selective hearing. For example, I'm about to describe the plot of The Bee Movie in excruciating detail to Spencer. Please, no. It's not about Barry's desire to be with Vanessa. It's really about the bees and like uh, how they are in the world. Like, like Barry is like a flower. He represents this um, thing, and you got the stuff, and like, uh, what do the people say like when they, they need like oh. It's a metaphor for life and death. Barry represents a flower, beautiful, freedom. 
in a desert of this barren, sullen world, and, and his desire to break... Nathan can tune anything out, except for his constant internal pain. More than just a first, and, uh, and just the sum of our parts. Barry is the perfect main character. Nope, nope, I'm done. All right, nope, Friday's over. Nope, I'm out. Go home, everybody, go home. No. This is worse than we thought. I know what you mean. I really didn't think it could get this bad. We were wrong. This is, this is just awful. Just awful. I'm done. We're getting out of this. Yeah, wouldn't that be nice? No, I'm serious. Forget contracts, forget obligations. But this is our only source of income. That doesn't matter. Do you remember why we got into showbiz? Sure I do. For art. This is not art, okay? This is us selling out. We're frauds. Then how do we get out of it? We run. Week three is all about driving. What? No, it's not. It's about toes. Listen, those are the only two washed up actors I have, and I need them back. You know everything about them. You're the only one who can find them. If you'd be willing to, there'll be some good monies involved when you do. Nathan agrees. To track down Tim and Spencer, Nathan must go back to the beginning of their career. Timothy Carroll and Spencer Wright, two young men from Oklahoma who made it big in showbiz in the mid-2010s. Once they made us laugh, cry, and cheer, but now they're in the Fallen Stars section of Netflix. What happened to these two, who showed so much promise and are now in movie star purgatory? Most recently, starring in commercials for household appliances. To find out, we'll have to go back to the beginning of their career. Their first work together was the low-budget, self-produced hit, Rooftop Mastermind. I read it in the paper, so it must be true. I love newspapers. Fairy tales. And pretty grim ones, too. Not long after their success, they came out with a colossal hit, Ignorance is Bliss. The duo went on to make several more hits, including The Rambunctious Renegades, a hastily and sloppily made western that is widely regarded as the turning point in Tim and Spencer's career. It's about a three days ride to Nome Town. <laughs> well, we better saddle up then. From here, they made the transition from the silver screen to television as the main characters on the show, Wishing Well Fools. Wishing Well Fools, happiest bunch you'll see. Wishing Well Fools, living in harmony. Hey, Wishing Well Fools, come on in, they're never rude. For 
From there, it only got worse. Why didn't you save us, Nathan? Why? Tim and Spencer got turned down by every production studio after their show tanked and are now the stars of some of your least favorite commercials. Red glass. Here's Tom Carlisle to demonstrate proper blinker techniques. I had the opportunity to sit down with both Tim and Spencer, but they seemed to be dodging any real questions I tried to ask. They appeared to be using the interview as a way to reminisce about their past. And believe me, we never expected an army of attack helicopters to rise up from beneath the oh, hill. Oh man, it's crazy. I'll tell you what was fun though. Filming a rooftop mastermind. Oh man, yeah. That's your weakness. I'm glad you chose a tall building though. It's a nice way to do it. Do it? Do what? Yes, of course. My suicide. We spent so much time on that rooftop, it became like the second home, really. Yeah, definitely. You know, if I had to go into like hiding for some reason, I don't know. I I definitely go to that rooftop. Oh yeah. I definitely go to that rooftop. 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 How did this happen to us, Tim? Didn't this mean something when we started? Sure it did. I've been thinking about all the people we left behind. Family, friends. I haven't seen most of them in over a year now. A year. We left all of them behind to come out here. To make our art. You know. I don't feel anything though. It's all over now. Was it worth it? I like to think so. Look how far we've come. Doesn't that mean anything? But does it? I mean, we were supposed to live as legends. Now look at us. Working for a producer who just wants us to make a quick buck. Doing a workout video. We have no one now. All our fans have deserted us. You saw the reviews. They say we sold out, just made the movies to make money. I mean, we were supposed to move the masses. Make everyone feel something. After we're gone, what are people going to remember? Is anyone even going to care? What's it all for anyways? It's just been wasted time. But we had fun, didn't we? That's all that matters. Isn't that why we started this in the first place? No one cares about fun, Tim. That's not what the critics want. That's not what draws in the crowd. We have no one now. <laughs> well, we have one. <laughs> Nathan? No, he's not quite the type of fan I'm looking for. Yeah, guy's a creep. Why'd our last fan have to be him?
Nathan, I don't know what you thought you heard, but it wasn't what it sounded like. No, it's okay. Everyone feels that way, Nathan said. Years ago, my family was killed in an accident, and I didn't do anything to save them. After that, I couldn't even bring myself to look anyone in the eye. I was so ashamed. It haunts me to this day. And then I found you. I watched the movies, all of them, and they all felt like they were made only for me. You made me forget about the pain, made me feel happy again. I even brought my favorite script with me to the rooftop. Nathan, we didn't know. But now I see it. I was wrong. You're not who I thought. You're just like everyone else. Everyone's the same. Maybe it would have been better to go on thinking you were heroes. Or is it better to see past my own delusion? I'll never know. I see now that it was wrong of me to idolize you like I did. After all, you're only human, right? Isn't that what we all are? Don't be like that. You haven't lost anything. I have nothing. And now I've been lost to you too. And the worst part is, you don't get it. No, no. I think I understand. These movies, our entire career, it's not about all the money or the fame or changing the world. It's about the individual. It's about making people happy. Even if it's only one person, that's all that matters. Really? Okay. Uh, okay, you're gonna like, okay, here's what we're gonna do. There's a little <laughs> pool right there. You're gonna do that, and you're gonna hold it there, and the Spencer says go, you do this, and it runs I'm down your face. Already, so just... <laughs> right, ready? Hey. Lean up. I'm gonna put it, and I'm gonna pool it right here. It's gonna be quite a bit. <laughs> Alright, go for it. <laughs> oh, this is impossible. Oh, no. I don't know if we're gonna get this. Can we try to actually cry?